Hi everybody, this is MarTech Talk, and today we're uh, fortunate to have David Barron, who's the go-to-market lead for HubSpot's cool new product, Service Hub. And uh, tell us, uh, welcome, and tell us a little bit about what you do as, uh, as the go-to-market lead. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's good to be here today. Um, so I would say being the go-to-market lead for Service Hub um, is a little bit of a general title to describe a broad set of activities that I perform. Um, so I'm responsible for the revenue number at the company level for for Service Hub, and I work closely with both our sales, service, and product teams to one, make sure our sales team understands the value and is delivering value to our customers, um, post-sale, making sure that our customers are successful being onboarded, and then collecting all the feedback from both of those teams, packaging it up nicely and bringing it to our product folks so that they can iterate and make the product better. Um, so I kind of sit like in the middle of a bunch of different functional areas as, as the conduit of information to, to bridge that gap. Cool, well, so it's an exciting role, particularly with uh, this is probably the biggest uh, product rollout for HubSpot in a long time. Uh, can you tell us, for those who don't know, what Service Hub is exactly? Yeah, for sure. So Service Hub is an end-to-end -end solution designed to turn your customers into promoters. Um, and so essentially what that means is we're giving you a way to collect customer inquiries and engage with them in a reactive fashion give them the ability to get their own questions answered through things like knowledge base to perform more proactive support and service, um, and then giving, giving you a way to essentially turn those customers into promoters using customer feedback, customer sentiment, NPS reporting. And I think for us, that's the ultimate goal, right? Like we didn't wanna just build a ticketing system or a help desk platform. What we wanted to do was make sure that all the companies that, that are in the HubSpot ecosystem are really starting to think about their customers as a way to kind of turn their internal flywheel to get more leads into marketing and, and build that brand voice, especially as we see um, buyers changing in general. And that's typically how we end up building tools anyways, as we look at a change in the market and we think about how we can build software to support those changes for companies that use HubSpot. You mentioned the flywheel, flywheel analogy. Uh, that's yeah. something that's relatively new for that HubSpot has been promoting, the idea of getting away from talking about the customer funnel and, and thinking about a flywheel. Can you talk about that a little bit and what, what that evolution means? Yeah, for sure. So I think for the longest time when we've talked about HubSpot or we've talked about um, just businesses in general, we talk about a funnel. And so you have something that obviously looks like this and you have marketing and leads at the top and then you have sales, closed business, and then customers end up being like this output or this thing that you get by doing marketing and sales activities. And essentially the flywheel kind of rethinks how your business should be set up. And so instead of thinking about your business as a funnel, you should think about it as, as the cyclical motion where marketing drives sales and then sales turns into service and providing exceptional service then turns into more marketing and more leads. And that kind of all revolves around in a circle. And as you start getting better at each one of those facets and you start thinking about the integrations between the two, you can really ramp up how fast your business is growing um, and, and really deliver a supreme and, and ultimately like the best possible customer experience. Can you talk, and that relates directly to from the beginnings of HubSpot, um, uh, how HubSpot's offering has evolved over time. And can you talk about kind of how HubSpot started with uh, the marketing product, Marketing Hub and Sales Hub, Service Hub, how, how it's all kind of um, one thing has led to another? Yeah, for sure. So like obviously uh, Brian and Darmesh started with this simple thesis that like the way people buy things has changed. And for small businesses to compete, like they could do simple things like start writing content. And that became the basis for inbound and inbound marketing. And so we, we were for a long time, like an app company, right? We built marketing applications. So we built top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel marketing tools. And then we started to get a lot of requests from our customers. Like, great. Once we get all these leads, like it turns out our salespeople actually want to see all this information. And we said, aha, like let's build a CRM. And so that's when we started getting into the CRM space. Um, and then believe it or not, the most common request we've gotten from our CRM users is a ticketing system. And so we started thinking about that and that's been happening for about three or four years, basically for the first like year after we launched um, the sales tools, people already started asking for ticketing systems. And for us, like we didn't just want to build a ticketing platform. Like we really wanted to think about, okay, if we build a ticketing system, like what does that mean for our customers? How does, 
Um, the way people shop and buy change affect how someone should think about customer service and support. Um, and we finally got to this point where we actually had a thesis on it, which is like what we call our inbound uh, service framework, which is engage, guide, and grow better customers. And, and from there, that's how, kind of how we dictated what the tools we built were. So we built reactive tools, we built proactive tools, and then we built tools that'll help you turn your customers into promoters. Um, and so we've really moved from uh, an apps platform to a suite of tools. And now we're really talking about being a front office platform that a growing co company can start with and you can essentially do all the things that you need to do to grow. And um, can, can you talk specifically, one of the things that I found interesting and, and honestly, until you guys HubSpot put all this together, some of it hadn't even occurred to me, but you know, with this latest uh, kind of remaking of HubSpot dashboard and the organization of it, makes a lot of sense in that you've got your, your lists all in one place, that your marketing functions, your sales functions, your service function can all tap into, whether it's prospects, uh, current customers, what have you. And in the same way that you can uh, email market, for example, to your prospects, you can email market to your existing customers to let them know make sure they're happy to let them know other things they could, you could upsell them to and so forth. And can you talk specifically about some of the, the synergies in the capabilities within HubSpot that can apply, whether it's marketing sales or service? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think a good way to, to visualize, um, so we have this flywheel where we go sales, marketing, service, back to marketing. And I think like there are companies that do this today with software, um, like Salesforce does this as a platform. There, there are a lot of companies that have all of these tools. I think where we really differentiate is at the intersections of each one of those, right? And I think that's really like, you saw the, the change in HubSpot with our new navigation rolling out where you can see all the tools now in one view. And I think that's really how we want people to think about their business. We don't want to think about, we don't want them to go in and say like, I just need to do more marketing or I just need to do more sales. We want them to think about like, how can we improve the overall customer experience? And so some things specifically um, that I would look at at some of those intersections. So like marketing to sales, that's obviously like a salesperson being able to go into HubSpot and see all of the past marketing communications, the forms that were filled out, all of that context and that data about who that person is before they go and reach out. Don't hold me to this, this nomenclature, but we've started to call these intersections kind of chevrons. Um, and so if you look like the, the marketing to sales is what I talked about, where marketing is delivering all this context into the sales team. And then we talk about, okay, for a sales team, like especially if you're a tech company and you have some software that you're selling, usually there's some sort of onboarding that happens uh, post-sale, right? And so like having a smooth transition from when a deal closes or an opportunity closes to a customer success person being able to actually onboard that customer and understand all the things that marketing took action-wise against that customer, all of the things that sales said, all the conversations that they've had, to then be able to pick up that relationship as if nothing had happened. That's truly how you think about and how we think about delivering a really, really great customer experience to, to spin the flywheel. And then to kind of complete, like, if we want to understand who our promoters are and do like better customer marketing, a lot of times when, it's, when someone wants to do customer marketing, what do they do? They email their entire customer base, right? And like, that is not a great thing to do, right? Like you don't want to just mass mail everyone in your customer base and say like, Hey, do you want to buy more stuff? Or, Hey, do you want to be a case study or testimonial? Like you want to understand the health of your install base of customers segment and perform specific actions on those folks. Right. And so for us, like, again, at the Chevron intersection between service and marketing, we can essentially give you a way to send NPS surveys to your customers, segment that data, and then trigger marketing automation off of that. So for example, if someone's a nine or a 10, they're a promoter of your business, you can trigger a marketing automation email back to them that says, hey, we're happy you're happy. Do you want to be a case study or testimonial? Or, hey, you might be a fit for this, this sort of product, and we can actually focus our upsell and cross-sell activities around folks that are happy, um, which is better for them and better for you. And then conversely, which I think is almost most important, is for people who are detractors, like we can set a task 
in HubSpot based on that survey response for the HubSpot owner or salesperson or marketer to follow up with that person one-to-one. -one. And that gives you a fighting chance as a growing business to, to understand that customer, take their feedback and action it. And then hopefully you can actually make a change for the better. And that impacts your entire install base and then your growth trajectory long-term. You know, we, uh, we use CRM every day. Mm -hmm. And we are using Service Hub every day now already, even though it has only been out for a very short time. We love it personally as an agency and using it. So we use the ticket system internally. Um, and we fall in love with Knowledge Base. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, Knowledge Base and how companies can use that? I'll, I'll slap our uh, Knowledge Base up on the screen while you're talking. Yeah, for sure. So I think um, just to kind of preface knowledge base, right? Like I talked a little bit, a little bit earlier about um, engage, guide, and, and grow, which is our essential framework for thinking about ho the post-sale world. And so knowledge base really falls under the guide section, right? And so basically, what we found is that one, the majority of people when they have a problem, they don't go to your website or pick up the phone and call you anymore. Like this is changing. What they do is they pick up their phone and they Google the question that they have. So like for us, it would be like, how do I set up service hub HubSpot in Google? And they expect an answer to be there. Right. And so for them, like you need to be thinking about people and your customers wanting to do that search and having those articles pre-written. And so our knowledge base is a way for any company and any person in a company to quickly and easily stand up a knowledge base to answer tactical questions that customers would have and get that online really, really quickly. Like you don't need a developer to do this. You don't need um, a bunch of engineers. You don't need to ping anyone. If you have Service Hub and you have access to it, like if you know what, you, what question you want to answer, you can go in, write the content and publish it in 30 seconds. And I think conversely, like, so we have this, the real reason we built it was customers expect to find answers to their questions online. And we need to give people a way to a company's a way to provide that solution. And two, well, if people find their answers online, they don't have to write in a ticket to support. And so that's better for you internally because you're not spending time answering a question that could have otherwise been answered by the customer. And so it's really cool because you're providing this, this um, customer experience that a customer expects. And then you're also helping your business process and, and your business margins become better over time by doing this. So I'm showing you our, our blog right now, and we've had a question as we are putting more and more stuff on the knowledge base. What we've been doing is we've had this exercise internally where we've uh, been just asking folks to come up with questions. And uh, an interesting question as we talk about synergies is sometimes something that um, we originally think of as a knowledge base question uh, could also be a great blog post and, and vice versa. And we chose to make our um, knowledge base, you know, uh, indexable by Google, and uh, um, which can help with search visibility. Uh, what is your thought or HubSpot's thoughts on how um, uh, knowledge base and a company blog or other publicly available information uh, can kind of work together? And, and how do you decide what's one piece of content versus another? Yeah, so this is a really good question and one that comes up a lot. And I think uh, the stance we have is the first question you have to ask when creating a piece of content is, who is the persona I'm writing this for? If the answer mm -hmm. is someone who is not yet a customer, so a lead or a prospect or someone in, in the funnel, in our, in our old world, right, like in our old funnel, then that should go on the blog, right? And the reason is because you want to bring them further down to a sale or an opportunity. And so you'll want things like forms and CTAs and conversion paths and the like. If your answer to that question is, this is specifically for a customer, then you want to put it on the knowledge base, right? And I'm not saying that like there are some instances where you, you wouldn't have a piece of content on the knowledge base and on the blog, but in general, it's basically like, is this person a customer? If the answer is yes, that goes on the knowledge base because if you saw our knowledge base, there's no CTAs, there's no forms, there's no pop-ups. It feels distinctly customary and that's on purpose. Like you want to provide a safe zone for your customers to go and get their questions answered. Um, and then I think there might be a little other nuanced fundamental differences where a blog 
probably a little bit more long form where we suggest the knowledge base be like two to three minutes max and super, super tactical, answering a very tactical question about your piece of software, for example. Um, so that's, that's kind of how we think about it. But, you know, like, I, I think one of the reasons that we moved from funnel to flywheel is because all the functional areas in a business are kind of converging right now. Like there used to be a huge separation between marketing sales and the service org. All of those folks now at a, at a modern company, like a tech company, all those people sit in the same room, all of their values and all of their ideas are weighted the same. And so like, this is just one of the examples where we have software that's, that's aimed at one persona in the business, but all of those personas are converging and that's why you have these questions coming up. Yeah, no, it's, it's really interesting. We've thought a lot about it. And I think that strategic versus tactical is one, you know, <clears throat> what I love about knowledge base, I've never, I mean, gosh, you know, I started out blogging a million years ago with Blogger and then WordPress for years. And then now we're on HubSpot COS. Man, I have never, ever come across an interface where it was so easy to get some content up and published. It's just amazing. It's so exciting. You just have an idea inspired, write it down, publish it. You can include artwork, you can include video, you can include whatever you want, but you don't have to. Like most blog templates today, like ours, for example, you can't even publish something without a piece of featured art that you have to go look for and you think about these things. And so that, I, I just, I just uh, completely, uh, you know, obsessed with knowledge base now simply because it's so easy to use yeah. and it's so easy to get content out there. I, I love that uh, about it. And uh, but we are still trying to figure out, OK, is this a blog post or is this a uh, knowledge base article? Because, for example, you know, we have a lot of SaaS um, clients and, you know, they're all review sites like Captera are important to them. And yep. so we get a lot of questions about Captera. So <clears throat> what we did, for example, um, I had shown in a moment ago, we just did a step by step on, you know, getting started with Captera if you're not on there or how to make the most of it if you are. And then kind of a step-by-step, -step, which is great for our customers that, so if what we've been doing is, you know, a customer asks us and then every time they ask, somebody internally asks somebody else, we ask somebody else, and then we find some old email that we sent to somebody else with the same question, and then we send it. And now they can just send the link. Uh, but then, then we do that and we wrote the cap therapy specifically for current customers because we had a customer ask us and we're like, you know what? They're not the only customers asked us that. But then we thought this would be, Really good blog content too, right? Yeah. But we don't want to have, since it's publicly indexed, we don't want to confuse Google with duplicate content. So it's like, shoot, it could be either. Which should it be? So we, we are, it's, it's not a bad problem to have. More content, the better. We just, we just, it's, it's an interesting, it's a, it's a tough question sometimes. Yeah. So I think like in this specific situation, like one, one frame that you may look at it in is like on the knowledge base, you have a two minute read about how to set up Cap Captera and it's step by step by step. On the blog, you have something like a long form article that's like why your SaaS business should use public review sites, right? Yeah. And then as, exactly. you go, as you go through that, like you're gonna be talking about Yelp, G2 Crowd, Captera, there are thousands of them. So you talk about the value of them and then you can talk about each one, their pros and cons, that sort of thing. And then you have this super tactical way to actually set that up on the knowledge base, but you have this like why and this thing that, that will really help you like answer a general question that someone's searching on Google to show up and, and, and drive traffic for you. Yeah, I like the idea. And we were talking about that too. And the way you put it is really good. The idea of, of the why going on the blog and the how going on the knowledge base. Because for example, you can have that why, why your SaaS company is missing out if you're not using review sites or, or maximizing review sites. And you talk about the rationale, you give some research, all that context. And then for the details, you could link to the knowledge base article, right? Exactly. Yeah. And like that will build your overall link authority and help you show up better ranking on Google. And one of the things we didn't mention about knowledge base, which uh, was actually like kind of an unintended consequence of us building the knowledge base on top of the tools we already use for our blogging platform and HubSpot marketing was that these articles index on Google extremely well. Like we have customers yeah. putting, up, putting up a knowledge base and the next day they're in the one or two spot on Google for, for that question in that organic rank. And like Google scraping and, and the Google algor algorithms tend to really love this type of article, which is like short form, really tactical answering a specific question. Um, and that boosts your overall domain authority as a company as well. So like, even 
like just putting out this knowledge base is beneficial. And that's one of those flywheel things where it's like, you think the knowledge base is just there to deflect some tickets or answer some customer questions, but putting out that mm -hmm. content is actually boosting your, your visibility across all of your, all of your, uh, your web domains. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, we, we're finding the same thing. Everything got indexed really quickly. Gosh, we've already got about 40 articles up, so it, it didn't take long. Um, and we're just, you know, we've got a lot of blog content up, but at the, at the pace the knowledge base is going, it, it, uh, we may have as many posts there before you know it. But it, it, I didn't want to make this all about knowledge base. It's just uh, one of the features. Why don't yeah. you um, talk about the, the, the key, the other key features of, of Service Hub besides knowledge base? Yeah, for sure. So I think like first and foremost, again, I'm going to go back to uh, our engage guide and grow framework for how we think about this. So if you think about engage, that's really about reactive support. So like being able to answer a question from a customer wherever, whenever and however they want. And so the tools we use to do that specifically in Service Hub are one conversations, which is essentially just a shared inbox. Um, and th that's not specific to Service Hub right now at HubSpot. It's really a platform piece because sales teams could use a shared inbox, your billing, your finance, your accounting teams can use that. Um, but in the context of Service Hub, it's probably the place that a lot of your support service and maybe customer success folks live in. So you create that inbox and then you hook up either live chat with our live chat tools or you hook up an email alias or multiple different emails, however you wanna do it, those all come into that conversations inbox and then users can answer those conversations from there. Then at some point, like one of those questions, you probably wanna put business process and organization around. And so we have this idea of tickets, right? And a ticket is simply a way to put business process and organization and stages and reporting around a conversation that's coming in, right? So you can get a conversation that comes in that's like, hey, what time are you guys open? or like, hey, are you gonna be at this trade show? Like, that's not a ticket, right? But someone could come in and be like, I'm having trouble getting set up with this specific feature in your app. How do I get this set up? That is a ticket. And so you can create those tickets, organize them, work them and close them. And so that's the engage style. Guide, I don't think we have to talk about anymore because that is the knowledge base. Um, and then we have this grow portion. And, and like to us, what we found is that a lot of our new business as HubSpot, the software company, is starting to come a lot through referrals and word of mouth, right? And when we ask customers, like, where do you get a lot of your leads? Right now, before they come into the HubSpot world, they'll say like, well, we get a lot through word of mouth and referral. And then our next question is, great, how do you get more of those if you want them? And the answer is, uh, I don't know, we go to more trade shows, like we, we email all of our customers and to us, we were like, okay, we should give people a way to actually mechanize the promoters in their install base. And so we do that with the customer feedback tool. So that allows you to send out customer feedback, NPS, customer effort score, CSAT scoring um, out to your customers. We collect all of that data, put it inside of HubSpot. So again, your marketing, your sales, and your service people can see all that on the contact. And then we let you run automation off of it to be able to turn your promoters um, into advocates for you. Right. So, hey, write us a review on this site or, hey, would you like to become a case study or testimonial, that sort of thing. And then conversely, take the detractors or the passives and put a business playbook around thinking about that, um, whether that's following up with them individually, aggregating some sort of team meeting weekly, doing some sort of voice of the customer meeting, whatever it may be. Um, so those are the, the four core apps is conversations, tickets, our knowledge base and customer feedback. And, um, and I know that I guess, not that we talk about <coughs> competitors, but I guess in some cases there may be companies that are using something like Zendesk that yeah. could, would, would, um, would a service hub replace that functionality? Um, I think as with every like software comparison, it depends on someone's process today. Um, what I will say is like Zendesk is a, is a premier partner of ours. We have a really great relationship with them. Um, I think for a really established business that has a super well built out support organization and needs a ton of customization, definitely Zendesk is probably a better fit for you now. If you've never had a support or service system or a help desk system, we're probably a really good fit right now. Again, I, I don't know, if, I can't remember if, if we did yeah. this before we were, we were recording or after, but we like to think about the HubSpot business in terms of like uh, some sort of game, so a baseball game. So our marketing business is yeah. in the 
the fourth or fifth inning, uh, our sales business is like the top of the second inning and service hub is like, we just took the field and the national anthem was sung. And so like, we really haven't even begun. We've been live for eight weeks. I suspect over time, just like we did with all of our other hubs, so marketing hub and sales hub in a year and a half or two years, we would be a great platform for a really like mid-sized company. Like if you have 300, 400, 500 employees, will easily be a fit for you. Right now, that's a little bit outside of our target market. Mm -hmm. um, that makes perfect sense. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time, but I wanted to ask, um, you know, we, we focus on B2B tech exclusively. Um, we have a lot of SaaS clients. Uh, we know that SaaS has been a big early adopter of Service Hub. Yep. If, you're, if you are uh, a SaaS company, uh, and you haven't really had uh, a lot of infrastructure in place in terms of service to this point, um, but say you're on HubSpot, mainly, maybe you've been using it mostly for marketing. Um, what's a good way to get started? Um, so, so right now, I think even before we talk about software, I think you need to start actually just thinking about what the customer journey is. At, at, like what happens when your customers come in as a lead what does their sales process look like? And then what are the many different ways that they can ask you questions post sale? And is that process okay with them? So like even before you talk about software or getting set up with Service Hub or, or Zendesk or, or one of these other tools, like you really need to figure out what the optimal solution is for your customers. And so we do a lot of just customer discovery. Like someone puts in a ticket. If someone's emailing you today that has a question post sale and you answer that, get on the phone with them for 15 minutes and say like, hey, you had this question. What did you do when you had that question? Where did you expect to go to find an answer? Did we answer it the way you wanted? Was that the right medium you wanted answered on? Like that is really Honestly, if you haven't had structure set up yet, that is where I would start. Like you want to feel like anytime a customer asks you a question or something happens with one of your customers, you know exactly why that happened and if that's what they would have expected. And, and the more we can bridge that gap into what we do and what they expect, the closer we can get into making truly happy and delighted customers and the more promoters we get in the long term, the healthier our business is, the easier it is to grow. Um, so so yeah, I know that wasn't a software like, hey, get on Service Hub today. Um, I will say that at some point in the future, oh, we'll have, we will have like freemium type tools to be able to get on and, and start using for free, essentially, just like we do with our sales tools. Um, but right now, what I would say is like, really look at your customer experience and your customer journey. And if you can't answer the question, like, is the way our customer interacts with us what they want? That's where you should start. That's the question you should answer. Right, right. You know, I was thinking about it uh, really from the beginning when um, Brian and Darmesh introduced uh, the, the concept of inbound marketing to HubSpot. Um, they've always talked about that customer delight component. Yeah. And, you know, with Service Hub, it's, it's really come to fruition in terms of really managing that and ensuring that. Um, and so uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to be uh, using it and uh, ultimately offering it. Um, Sure, you're having having fun uh, being the go-to-market lead for it. So yeah, but it's, I, been, I, uh, it's been quite some time in the making. You know, we've been working. At, we've been we've been ideating on it for two and a half years, thinking about like when is it the right time? Is it the right time? What do we build? That sort of thing. And then we've been really, really going after it probably for about a, a year, a little over a year. So it's been a long time coming. And I think for me, the biggest thing right now is like being able to talk to our customers and how happy and how much value they see in using service hub is part of like all in one with, with the rest of the tools, CRM sales professional and the marketing tools and like how much that's actually changing their business, right? Like just simply moving into a world where all of your customer data and interaction lives in one spot is like, we knew it would be a big deal, but um, yeah. it, it's, it's been, it's been really satisfying seeing uh, how successful folks have been with it. I'll bet. I'll bet. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time out to talk with uh, our uh, audience about it. And uh, it's great to, uh, we actually had never met before. It's great to meet you. Yeah. Too. Hopefully I'll see you in person in Boston sometime. Yeah, I hope to see you at Inbound.